Um, in your press release announcing the deal, there's a quote from you uh, that says, you believe today's transaction is an affirmation of our commitment to lead a structural change for our vital industry. What does that actually mean? Well, David, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. What it means is that we recognize the low returns this industry's had over the last decade. So we put together a value proposition and a company that was really going to focus on compelling returns of capital and on capital back to the shareholder, a sustainable company with respect to our ESG strategy that we're deploying as a company. And it really is about low cost of supply assets. It's about a resilient and very strong balance sheet. It's about adequate capital allocation that really focuses on value over growth. It's about distributions back to the shareholder and then doing that in a sustainable way that recognizes the transition, the energy transition that we're going through as a, as a, as a globe. Right. All right. So you mentioned sustainability at least twice just now and ESG very early in your answers. Uh, is this transaction in some way a catalyst for trying to reach some of these goals that you're talking about in ESG? Uh, well, yeah. Well, certainly the, the unconventionals in the U.S. are some of the lowest uh, equivalent carbon per barrel of production in anywhere in the world today. So this transaction and, and bringing in the Concho uh, business into our company is really a, a marriage of two great companies that have a similar view around uh, sustainability, around the communities that we work in, and all the really aspects of, of ESG that make this important. So it's a great complement between the two companies and one where we're going to add 23 billion barrels of resource that has an average cost of supply of less than $30 a barrel WTI. That's the resilience piece. That's the, the long-term nature of this transaction and one that uh, recognizes all the key drivers that are important in this business. Now, another key part would seem to be something we weren't aware of previously is that Tim Leach, the CEO of Concho, is going to become, uh, um, well, essentially running your lower 48, as you're putting it, uh, the president of that. Um, why and what does that mean in terms of the way you view the company? Well, I think it's a recognition of the tremendous company that Tim has built over the course of many decades. So he's put a, a fabulous company together that has a huge position in the Permian Basin, both the Delaware and the Midland Basin. It's gonna be a great augment into our company. And it's really important in these unconventional developments to uh, share learnings across, get, get quickly down the learning curve, to create the margins that are uh, really important in a very volatile macro environment that we see today. So we're going to be the, the largest independent company with uh, 1.5 million barrels a day of production. And we're going to be one of the most diverse independent company. So we've got huge positions in the Eagleford, in the Bakken, and now a huge position in the Delaware and a growing position up in the Bakken in Canada. So our unconventional portfolio is growing, and that's balanced against a global footprint in a conventional and other assets within the company that reduce the capital intensity and just add to the global diverse nature. So it's Alaska. It's Canada, it's uh, Europe and Norway, it's Asia Pacific, it's the Middle East. So we bring a unique portfolio to the upstream EMP space that we think is unmatched by anywhere. And this, this acquisition of, of Concho just adds to that resiliency and that heft and that uh, low cost supply resource base that we've captured inside the company. And it's going to last for decades, which is really the exciting part of what we're doing. Uh, Mr. Lance, Jim Kramer, uh, great to see you. Thank you for coming. Yeah, I on. need to come visit you, Jim. I got I, I can convince you otherwise. Believe me. Well, let me tell you why I feel that way. You run a great company. You even raised your dividend last week. You have done every bit of capital discipline that could ever be dreamed of. It, it really, kind of a wonder in this environment. And yet, your stock's down forty-eight percent. And one of the reasons why I've been saying it's uninvestable is not because of something you're doing, you're doing, you're giving her all she got. So what I'm struggling with, and I think this is a great merger because I've always liked Concho, is that w what does it take for investors to decide, you know what, this is the bottom, well, you got a good yield, we got to buy. Yeah, so we're, we're convinced, Jim, that, the, the, that we got to change the paradigm. We got to attract more investors back into this business. The way we do that is compete against the industrial space. So you look at the dividend, what it's yielding today, you look at the free cash flow yield, the top line growth that we can create as a company. We're not going to try to grow our brains out. We're going to do that with strong returns and strong value. So it's the fundamental things investors are going to want out of this business. We're going to take the volatility out. We've got a strong balance sheet to run through that volatility, continue to invest our capital, continue to give our returns back to the shareholders. 
So it's a growing dividend. When we get excess, uh, excess cash, we'll return more back to the shareholder. We've committed to 30% of our cash going back to the shareholder. You've already mentioned the strong dividend yield. We've got the resources to grow and they're low cost of supply. So we know we're only gonna invest in things that have less than $40 a barrel WTI cost supply. So that ensures that we're gonna get an after-tax return of 10% and you will see growing ROCE over time. And when we demonstrate that, we understand we gotta put a quarter after quarter after quarter of performance together. But if you look at our past history as a company as ConocoPhillips, that's what we've been doing. It's a shareholder friendly approach to the NP business. With this acquisition of Concho, it supercharges that. It gives us the resource base to really do this for decades, uh, decades to come. So that's what I want to convince you. It is an investable value proposition in the NP space, but it's something new and it's something different. We recognize we've got to go do it. We've been ex ex executing on this for the last couple of years. And the Concho just is a great augment because they have the same, you know, you followed them for a long time. Sure. Tim's got the same view about what it takes to succeed in this business is what we're describing in this great combination. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.